Hey, uh, welcome everybody. June 1st, getting the end of the uh, Q2 already, um, but June is here. Yeah, so June, June 1st, Implementers Working Group Sync. Uh, thanks all for being able to attend. Uh, I'll, oh, sorry, I'll share my screen here so that's visible for anyone who's watching. Uh, and then the link to the doc is in the meeting invites and it'll be in the YouTube video description as well. Uh, so yeah, we have started that. Um, not really critical, but feel free to put your name down on the attendees list if you'd like. Um, again, this is partly as a you know, part of how we use this time is like water cooler around like, hey, what are different IPFS implementers up to? So again, no one's required to share anything, but feel free to jot down any updates. Uh, and if there's other agenda items that you want to discuss. Um, and I guess with that, we'll talk IPIPs. Thanks, Lytle, for preparing and kind of getting some things moved forward. But do you want to take over and share? And if you need to, if you need to share screen, feel free to. No, I think it's it's fine. Uh, as per usual with uh, IPIPs, it's mostly you know the number and you can go there to read more. <laughs> um, um, but uh, there are actually, like, I think the gist is there are two which are small enough and uh, are ready for final reviews. So kind of like they are in the final review column on the board. Uh, one is about uh, adding support for uh, IPNS um, on uh, to the delegated HTTP API we have. Um, the main reason we need this is to remove dependency on Kubo RPC from projects like RIA. Currently, uh, the way IPNS is resolved, uh, Bifrost Gateway has to hit some Kubo RPC to do the IPNS resolution. If we have it built into routing V1, then this endpoint could be on CID.contact, it could be standalone service, uh, and we no longer need to use kubrpc and just a reminder why don't we just re-implement the same kubrpc path is that that api was never designed to be exposed on the web it's like internal kubo api and it has no notion of cache control um, the idea here this will be uh, specifically specifically designed to be used by web clients including browsers uh, and the cache control header will be based on things like TTL of the IPNS record, which will effectively leverage HTTP caching for storing IPNS resolution um, and respect the TTL uh, of the original publisher. The, the second one is about streaming. If we want to, in, again, in the projects like RIA, we, we are uh, delegating DHT lookup to some other service. Um, we want to be able to, for a client, to act on the results as soon as they arrive. If it's an indexer, it's probably not a big deal because it can return all the results fairly fast. But if it's uh, just a proxy to something slower like DHT, you want to get results as soon as uh, the server uh, learns about them. Um, so those two IPIPs um, are more or less finished and uh, ready for uh, for any final feedback. If we hear no veto or concerns uh, till we have the next uh, implementers call, we'll most likely ratify them and merge them. Uh, and I, there's already reference implementation in Kubo, I believe, uh, for streaming. Uh, same with delegated IPNS. We have a POC um, a pull request in Kubo, uh, which exposes internal Kubo routing system as routing v1, and IPNS will be part of that. So uh, that's for those two. And the third one, the delegated peer routing. Well, we have uh, content routing, we have IPNS routing, and we also need peer routing. So to land that Kubo PR, we also need to have a spec for uh, exposing peers. So that's the, the third one, but this one is not ready yet for final review, but just uh, asking for early feedback. And then uh, the last one is about um, clients like Kubo uh, being able to not just use external HTTP endpoint for lookup, but, but also be able to do a bulk announcement or one by one announcement to the uh, to that endpoint. Um, for example, being able to publish IPNS record without having to run 
uh, DHT or announce uh, CIDs that you have with the protocols that you speak to CID.contact without running DHT uh, use cases like that. Um, and, and the last one I will add link later is about uh, trustless gateway. Uh, it's similar situation. We uh, we have uh, two IPIPs, uh, which more or less will be ready for final vote, hopefully in the, in the, in the two weeks. Uh, we want to get them to that point where we can uh, uh ratify them uh so this is like uh pe penultimate warning <laughs> to review them um and those are about improving uh car responses on trustless gateways and that's that's it i guess thanks for the update Lytle. anyone have any questions on any of these or others that they want to be buying for getting attention on Okay, cool. Thank, uh, th yeah, th th thanks, Lytle. Good, to, good to see. And I guess to be, like, just to be really precise on this, Lytle, for these two that you know they've been open for a while, they really haven't been controversial. We're we partly just want to get the actual implementation fully released. I know it's been coded. Uh, is this the will we complete these at next? Sorry, will we merge these next cycle, assuming no comments? Sorry, to next meeting if there's no comments, or are you planning to do it beforehand? Uh, I think it's perfectly fine for them to be open, uh, but if uh, the other ones are based on them, so uh, it may be it may be uh, less work to merge them before that. Uh, I see. I, in this case, I don't expect any controversy. They're they're really really small. Uh, okay. But uh, but in in general, if we don't have time to do that, we'll do that after uh, the next IPFS implementers. Cool. So maybe let's just to be safe in case if you come to the blocker, like leave these open for another week at max. Obviously, we, whether we get to actually getting merging them then, but if, if someone did really want to get comments, they have to get it in within next week. Yeah, yeah. I think that's sensible. Okay, cool. I don't know. What would that be? That would be the eighth. Okay. Great. Um, thank you. Cool. So just opening this up for any conversations around implementations uh so a couple i can share you know like the the jsipfs deprecation is heavily underway in terms of like there's been quite a bit of planning for that but now actually doing the disruptive things of closing out issues marking npm modules as deprecated etc that's all um that's all happening uh and you know there's there's still i think i think there's a few few more issues. I think about 30 more issues in PRs to finish going through. Then the remainder of this project is on like docs.ipfs.tech, uh, the js.ipfs.io website, and Proto School all have pretty heavy, um, you know, I don't know. It's going to say entanglements with JSIPFS, and so need to start pulling pulling those apart. So that's that's what the Helio Working Group is focusing on right now, um, but not a lot of uh, there hasn't been a lot of feature development in Helia itself. It's really about um, you know, pointing people over to it and then uh, the documentation efforts. Sort of related to that, uh, a lot of the protocol labs group is involved in HackFS that is you know just kicking off. Um, you know, and there are prizes around IPFS, kind of the main imp IPFS implementation that is being kind of showcased uh, in HackFS is um, Helia. Obviously, it's totally fine for people to be use you know, for participants to be using other implementations but we do have the helio working group folks like engaged with um you know they, they've put prompts together they're they're on the eth global uh discord etc um so again it's a lot of it is just around engaging with uh, users and figuring out what any barriers are to adoption so that that's what's happening there uh on the on the kubo front i don't think anything too critical need to have to share there will be an rc looks like coming out likely on Monday, and that change log will ex express all the things that are happening in that, but I won't, I won't run over that now, wait till that document's out. Do you want to talk on IRO, Brennan? Yeah, uh, just really quickly, uh, to set expectations for this group, um, I've opted to defer writing some of our spec work that we had been sort of promising here. Uh, I think we owe this group a spec before we start talking about any integration stuff. That's going to start July 1. 
<clears throat> for us because we're pretty focused on getting a uh, new release of IRO out as we speak. And so that'll be happening. That's happening right now. Uh, if you would like a demo of some of the stuff that we're doing to just slake your curiosity, I'd be happy to give you one so everyone feel free to reach out. But mainly I just wanted to sort of signal to this group that we're going to try and get a pretty concise, relatively uh, reliable version of the IRO spec up so that we can start into meaningful interop spec level integration work uh, in sometime in July is when our team will be ready for it. Uh, then that will just be dependent on whether when others want to have a conversation, mainly just a expectation management. Beyond that, not much to announce. Cool. Thank, uh, th thanks, Brandon. And it, so I, I know people can reach out to you if they want a demo. Will I know you in the past have done? You guys have published different videos and shared on YouTube. Is that something? Will that be a medium yeah, yeah. that you'll be using in the next month, or will Absolutely. that be coming? Okay. We'll be going pretty wide with it later. This is more early access stuff. If okay. you want to see, so this the project. The product will be a sort of hosted solution that'll spin up an IRO network for you. And so mainly it's just for if folks here want to ask technical questions on how that'll look, or if you want an account, uh, let me know, and we can. I'd be happy to get your feedback and see see how it looks. We're always looking. This group in particular is just so good at giving uh, meaningful feedback on how the whole system is set up. So if you want to chat about what I was up to, I'm happy to chat, but I also feel like everybody's super busy and don't want you to like, <laughs> I don't want to subject you to that unless you're interested. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. You can expect YouTube videos and full public press stuff closer to September will be the timing of it. Cool. Sounds good. Thank thanks, Brandon. Uh, just surfacing for, uh, real quick on this one, uh, you know, James on the PL Andres doc team had taken a pass at doing some update on our IPFS implementations list. Uh, I went and made some changes as well. So got things like, you know, Lassie is now listed, you know, JS IPFS has been moved down into the inactive column. Um, so there's, there's some updates there, you know, that's, that's kind of a, this is a manually curated table. We tend to, you know, that, that kind of came about, I guess, around IPFS thing last year, right? Just on that push that to, to give clarity that there are multiple IPFS implementations. And whenever we say implementations, we tend to link to this document. Um, so if if you see other updates, you want to quickly add comments, you know, James and I can make sure that that gets merged in. Obviously, there can be follow-up PRs as well, but uh, actually kind of revisited that. And there was a decent amount of shifts that needed to occur. So that that went on there. Um, you know, Molly had been asking about like, hey, how do we surface? What about surfacing IPVM? And uh, WinFS, um, I, I do want to give you know visibility to those projects. They don't really seem to me to like fit under our IPFS implementers table. Um, I, I, sorry, IPFS implementations table. I didn't know if people had ideas on like a good ways to give visibility to those things for people to check out. Um, but I, I, I don't know. They didn't seem to me like they really fit at least with our current categorization. But yeah, I, I don't know. any comments or suggestions here? Welcome. Otherwise, we can certainly skip and move on. I have one high level comment there, uh, uh, Steve. I think the, if I understand correctly, the IPFS website is undergoing a little bit of a refurbish. Is that correct? Uh, as in uh, IPFS.tech, the like the the top level page. Yeah, yeah. That is, yes. I I haven't I haven't seen the latest. I know. Yeah, I know there was some like in flight work on that. I I'm not up on the latest there. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all good. I just think that that's a great place to showcase stuff being built on top of IPFS. Like, maybe we want to link to it prominently. Maybe not homepage top six are pixels, but like, there's to your point, WinFS and IBVM and uh, a number of other projects use IPFS as a dependency. And so mm -hmm. I think it would be great to find some uh, marketing positioned version of that, and then a documentation level sort of supporting thing would be great. But I think there's there's a cascade between hey this is IPFS this is what people use IPFS to do um, and it's I think it's really nice to need to see IPVM and WinFS um, highlighted in that context mm. if at all possible it'd be great to see like a section of the homepage showing up specific use cases that would be really neat. Okay, that's a good suggestion. I can add that in the notes. Okay, sounds good. I, and I saw your comment too, Hannah. That I think could see that being useful as well. Around uh, what did you say here? A, a core, core technology project section that that could also work. Um, I also say like some of the, 
you know, maybe it's just like a couple of standout ones, but some of the things that are listed in like the lighter experimental IPFS implementations section of that doc mm -hmm. are like, I don't know, IPVM seems like it could land there just alongside anything else. Like, I mean, like Auspinner and Boost are very specific things, right? That do very specific, like, they're like very specific subsets of IPFS -E tooling. Like if those mm -hmm. things are there, I don't see any reason IPVM wouldn't, wouldn't also reasonably end up there. Um, okay. WinFS is slightly different depending on how they want to lens it. If you just want to think of it as like, it's different IPLD tooling than like that many IPFS people may benefit from, then that it sort of has a need side of a slightly different home. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think there's probably some spectrum of like library. There's like libraries to implementation, so like libraries to binaries and tooling. And there's like whole sets of that that cover wider spectrums it, it just it probably means like we need a little like brendan was saying like what are people building with this like mm -hmm. the categorization maybe needs to be slightly different than these are ipfs implementations and these are other things more like you are trying to do an x that is ipfs -y. what do you reach for mm -hmm. um because then that makes it like a little more uh, maybe a little more obvious where where buckets go and you're not trying to like draw this like you're not trying to draw like a bright line anywhere mm -hmm. okay um good good feedback thanks cool cool i know you know i guess the, the message there is like anytime folks feel free to add you know, like there's there's no special permissions on that that table um Create create PRs if you see changes. And you know, for example, like I, I, I guess one comment on this is I changed this to be not just popular, but I said popular or actively maintained. Um, and so, and then moving something like Boost up there, given that that's heavily uh, you know, relied upon now in the Filecoin ecosystem, so that that's got bumped up. And others feel free to make proposals too. Great, thank thanks all. Um, so I guess we'll move on from that topic. And Lila, you want to quickly speak to this one? Um, yeah, so across various projects and use cases, we see people trying to use uh, HTTP and HTTPS uh, segmenting multi-others. Um, and kind of like just, just uh, as a PSA uh, or FYI uh, for everyone uh, involved, uh, would be good to get a common understanding of what is um, what if what is the purpose of this uh, uh, this segment in multi others and if uh, HTTP pa uh, semantics such as paths headers uh, and other things uh, belong to the multi others or not. Um, just i i feel it will it has a big impact on the interop maybe people are not aware but often libraries are written in a way where if there's unknown uh code or segment in a multi other uh, not every implementation is uh, um, uh, graceful with those cases which so, I guess uh, maybe just as a like reminder shout out for things that have binary forms and text forms. Um, please, please try and use the binary forms when they're not facing the users. Uh, it, it will make your life easier. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I guess the, 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 the general context is that Anyone in, interested in multi others should read this. Anyone interested in HTTP should read this because uh, if we don't have a common agreement, we may have some internal problems down the road in strange places. Uh, even if we think they will never touch, they usually do because users uh, outside of PL, uh, outside maybe even uh, uh, IPFS ecosystem will start using HTTP multi others for other things. Um, and then we end up with different competing uh, standards and use cases. Uh, the current uh, position of this paper is that, uh, of this memo is that uh, HTTP semantics such as paths do not belong 
uh, to the HTTP segment. If you want to add them, then there needs to be another segment which is specific to some uh, application protocol, uh, like uh, and not specific to the HTTP. Uh, but that's up to discussion. Uh, so if anyone has any thoughts, uh, feedback on that issue. I mean, I guess I'm happy to uh, try and articulate the position for um, why we ended up uh, proposing uh, from the IPNI perspective an HTTP path um, segment of multi-adders as a general HTTP thing, rather than you know saying that it was like an IPNI HTTP path uh, specific thing. Um, I'm not sure I feel super strongly about this, uh, but I mean, you know, to say that you've got a prefix uh, for how you get to um, a mounted uh, endpoint uh, in HTTP is is something that generally we could say is you know HTTP ish. Um, and and so what we found ourselves doing was we had uh, a desire for an HTTP uh, endpoint in addition to a a normal libp to p endpoint. And so we would need a multi-adder to connect to the libp2p endpoint. And rather than having some additional struct complexity of both the libp2p multi-adder in case someone wanted to have their libp2p endpoint or a URL if they wanted to have their HTTP endpoint, we said, well, we can basically get these URLs that we need into a multi-adder as well. And so we just have a single multi-adder that will signal not only you know, where to find this endpoint, but also you know, what protocol and, and so forth. And if we see that it's an HTTP segment in there, we know we should actually transform it back into a URL. And uh, the the one thing that we then had was that there were people who wanted subdirectories. And so we had this additional need for a path uh, prefix uh, in front of our semantics. And so we had an HTTP path to do that. Um, and so then we have the single string slash single binary representation uh, that we can use uh, both to differentiate HTTP as one uh, possible uh, path of, uh, or one possible address of a multi-address, um, but we got enough to get to the endpoint that had our semantics as well. Um, I think it's okay to say, you know, that path prefix need is something that we just redo each time an application needs it. Um, but it does seem that every time you're going to try and encode uh, an HTTP URL into a libp2p multi-adder, you, you may find that there are this things, the set of things like an HTTP path that you may want in terms of where is this. Um, and so I wonder if it makes sense to, to have that one level higher than a specific application. Yeah, the, the, the usual comment here is that the path is not the only thing that people will ask you. What happens when someone asks you to add the basic auth? Um, do you add an, another thing to multi-other spec because someone asked you? Uh, where do we put the line in the sand? And I'm not saying it's good one way or another. I'm just, uh, we had those discussions before and maybe I'll uh, drop it uh, uh, on the, in the notes, right? Uh, the people, the paths are kind of like 80% of the problem. Uh, but uh, the question is, do we say that that's enough and we never do more or do we open Pandora's box and where people want to uh, expose more things here. Uh, we had that in uh, IPFS desktop. We had that in IPFS companion. We had that in uh, IPFS web UI. Everywhere where we uh, used multi-others for Kubo RPC endpoint, people wanted to have basic auth or they wanted to have some uh, header with some token which guards uh, the access uh, to the API. Um, so, uh, it could be that you know for 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 the for your specific use case the paths are the only thing that people want right now the problem is uh once we open the, uh, the, the those doors we 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 need to have some sort of like a written policy that we only have paths uh, otherwise uh, we will end up with uh, many many codes
So what's the, um, I guess, like your suggestion on the best way to move things forward here? Like, obviously, uh, Marco wrote things in libp2p specs. Is it true to say that really this belongs in multi, in the multi-adder repo, which is where we should be having this discussion, not in libp2p specs? So it, it's a good question. It's a similar question to uh, cid.contact specs. Who's maintaining them? Um, uh, multi-adder uh, is mostly consumed by libp2p folks. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I mean, is there like multi-formats team uh, taking care of uh, specs and, uh, and governance? I, I, I don't think so. It's just like we in IPFS Wait, land took over the CID, the, the multi-others, are, are they used, uh, maintained by a separate group? Wasn't there a push to get a lot of the multi-format stuff into the W3C? Like yeah. Uh, and and that and adding random codes will only make that harder. It, it's, well, it's, that's so like let's just not have multiple governing bodies. Let's just this just sounds like a nightmare. yeah yeah. We have but a not, multi like, multi codex uh, uh, working group on I, ITF, I believe, and uh, there's like multi codec and multi base, or was it like multi so there, and multi codec? Yes, and that has been the push of the browsers and platforms team, if I understand correctly. And so like there is an effort to find a housing for this. The housing for it is the ideally the IETF, which is far more strict than this group tends to be. Um, and as if I follow that discussion properly, they uh, it is not outside of the realm of possibility that they'll want to rewrite whole swaths of the multi-universe. Um, and so I think it's worth at bare minimum circling up with those folks and understanding what the intention is there before trying to figure out who governs this uh fair, fair so on a practical level like in terms of guarding the tables that has primarily been folks like rod and volker they 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 triage that and really stay on on top of it but they do partition out the multi-adder side of the world and let lib p2p handle it so anything multi-adder they they expect that 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 gets handled by the you know by lib p2p maintainers um and that's been like a deliberate both sides are aware kind of conversation. Um, and, and I don't think I'm not up on what's been happening with conversations with governance from IETF, et cetera, um, and, and whether it's expected that multi adder is under that purview or or not. But, but I think in terms of anything short term, it's the de facto with multi adder has been the lib P2P um, has been the lib P2P team. Yeah, if I understand correctly, I don't think that. Multi-adder stuff is, I think it was more uh, multi-hashes and multi-formats. Yeah, but that makes sense to me. I think in, in practice, like I, I find multi-adder really attractive. And as somebody uh, coming that that's from the outside, the HTTP stuff for me would be an instant killer. I would not adopt that at all if I had to deal with HTTP having semantics. It's just, it bloats the spec a lot uh, in a way that feels um, sort of <sighs> semi-orthogonal to the, the portion of the networking stack that um, multi-adder often deals with. I understand there's like, this sort of began with the DNS address stuff, which I, I, I feel like the person I was okay with, um, it makes a lot of sense given uh, some of the obvious use cases for bootstrapping peers, but, uh, yeah, just my like outsider's take on on it. I think it makes a ton of sense for the IPNI project. I totally would if doing content routing buy into some spec that has this extension to multi-addresses. Then instead it's cool, I'm gonna encounter this exotic address type and, and my system would be expected, expected to handle it. But um, for the base multi-address spec, that feels I'm, I'm with Lila on it feeling like a lot. And they're already sort of like random like I don't say random we'll say uh not super used multi-adders in the table like onion and whatnot um I feel like where this tends to like the lines get blurred is around multi-adder tends to be around how to identi identify the machine that I'm talking to and what I need in order to communicate with them and that can bleed really quickly into what is the protocol I am using to make a request and transfer bytes from them? 
Uh, and like that, that line isn't super obvious. Does it, does it happen at the security layer? Does it happen at the multiplexer layer? Does it happen at the, here's the thing here, the, the, you know, the transport layer is HTTP being used as a transport or as like the fetching protocol. Um, and so like that, I feel like that's where like the fuzziness comes in and where like you put, you, you know, you put up the spec and you get people to give feedback on whether they think this is a good or a bad idea. Cause it's, because it's fuzzy and maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's a bad idea. I think having, I, within reason, I feel like the point of the table is to be used. And so like, I, I tend to lean towards like, let people have addresses and then let people decide they're not supporting them. Kubo doesn't support onion addresses. Doesn't, sorry, never has. Maybe in the future it will, so far it doesn't. No one's putting it on their roadmap, that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents. Totally, and I think this is where like you see like optional optional extensions, right? Hey, if you want to support Onion, this is what that looks like. Uh, okay, so is this sort of a request for like a little bit how like we're like okay, the minimal things for IPFS stuff is like CIDs. You want to be like, what are the minimal set of multi adders like a sane group would need to care about? recursive conversation yeah like it's a yeah. you're well just for a different part of the the ecosystem so like what are the recommended mm -hmm. sane minimal things and this is like this is the ip layer and this is the p2p -P layer and this is the okay yeah i think it makes it easier to adopt and it makes it easier to opt in because like i think what it sounds like what this group wants is you know will's got like a solid proposal or will and co from how to running world have a solid proposal on like hey this is how we could coalesce a conversation that started in 2018 in a meaningful way. <laughs> okay, cool. And Lionel wants to lend don't add tokens to that. Like there's a, the shape of the spec here. And if the only concern is just that we don't want to be forced to adopt it, then having it, you know, framed out specifically as an optional extension allows me in, in slow, low minimalist land to say, oh, cool. I can recognize that and just respond with, I don't support that for onion addresses and these things. And that that might be a really nice compromise, I think, because I have, I have no, uh, I, I'm super into the idea of having specificity around what that would look like should one want to use it. Um, just, and so I think that, maybe that's the right way to approach this. Okay, okay yeah, so for uh, like a practical matter, like what's the, and I'm sorry, turn to you, Lytle. Like, do you have thoughts on the best way to move this forward? Like, do, do, does this does this conversation like belong under, uh, you know, kind of IPFS governance, or should it be bumped down into lib P2P land? And those who want to engage with it, talk about it there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like interesting because, um, I, and I think that up, uh, maybe someone can uh, copy to Notion from uh, from the chat from Zoom. Um, ITF uh, has a working group now. Uh, called multi-formats and uh, um, the current scope of that group is uh, multi-base and multi-hash and that means uh, that the, the multi-hash uses codes from the table um, multi-other kind of also uses code from the table it's not in the scope of that group at least my understanding is that right now it's not in the scope, but at the same time, uh, potentially the governance of the table would go over there. Um, and that means the multi other with consuming that table governance is then tied at the hip with that group. So it's an open-ended question. I think in practice, nothing will change for the next, 12 months mm -hmm. and we also will ship a bunch of things in the next 12 months um, and then the code that lives in production speaks um, and often the specs are uh, like a river around that flowing around that to to reflect the shape of an island of the production code so I feel we need to just agree on something uh, if we say that the position is that 
implementations are free to invent application specific uh, things uh, be on the right side of uh, HDB segment. Maybe that's the solution, but I, I, I just want to have uh, an agreement to avoid interop uh, problems. Uh, and I feel it's not, I, I feel we cannot uh, delay this. It's not like we can say, oh, let's wait for ITF uh, to pick up multi other and solve this for us, because in the 12 months, we will ship stuff anyway. Um, so I, I feel folks should just engage on that thing and uh, uh, if uh, and propose uh, so, some consensus. Uh, cool. So I think I think everyone's agreed with you, Lida. Like, I'm not going to wait on anyone else. Like, we're we're and, and we and this needs to get like you know solved you know quickly soon. Uh, I guess just mechanics. Where do we want people to engage? Is it is it the lib P2P spec that Marco put up? Is you know is it should be be something in the multi adder repo? I I just want to make sure we are all aligned on like where that we should be engaged and like where the decision making is going to happen. Yeah, I, I think the lib P2P one is because it exists. Uh, it's uh, the multi others are primarily used in in lib P2P, and I think that makes sense. If you if you want me to pick something, I pick something that exists, and we already have discussion there. Uh, there's uh, the proposal for HTTP path is in the IPNI repo. Uh, I, I've added it uh, to the top uh, comment of the lib P2P one, so people can read it for additional context. Uh, but in general, I, I feel uh, working on this uh, lib P2P one and, um, and, and uh, yeah, we need to have some agreement. And I understand where Will is coming from because we uh, we have the same problem with uh, trustless gateways. We the fact like from for example from in Kubo, uh, currently it's just bit swap, but maybe like in twelve months we'll have uh, Kubo speaking both bit swap and HTTP. Um, those IPs for partial cars and other things are building blocks towards. Uh, peers being able to negotiate a retrieval over HTTP. So we may have a situation when uh, peers are announcing trustless gateway. Uh, and, you know, trustless gateway is on the slash IPFS uh, path, just like uh, we'll propose the path for uh, IPNI thing. Um, would we pollute uh, those addresses with uh, uh, like application specific endpoint? Probably not. Uh, but at the same time, we should not fail if peers announce something be beyond uh, HTTP. Um, so uh, I, I feel we need to, even if we disagree, we need to write down error handling. <laughs> Maybe that's my, my point of the bare minimum that we can disagree and commit. Uh, that if anything is be, be, be behind the HTTP, you should handle that explicitly and ignore and not fail. Uh, even if that's the minimum we can agree on, I, I would be happy with that because then we can PR all the libraries and make sure nothing uh, falls on face, just like it did when we introduced Quick or when we introduced Quick V1. It's not like I'm paranoid for no reason. <laughs> Those things happen. Uh, Okay, um, good. I mean, so I think we've identified like where that is. It, it, I guess what so a lot of people on this call are good stakeholders and care about this conversation. Is there other people like like is there other places where you want to get this surfaced, Marco? That you're worried about getting buy-in from, like the wider the P two P community that we need to be cognizant of, or is it? Is it really uh, you know, kind of folks more in the IPFS implementer community that need to make sure aren't doing something counter to where the P2P is hoping to take multi-adders, particularly as they pertain to HTTP? Yeah, I think as long as, I think the main spots are just like anywhere where folks are using a HTTP component in the wild, I feel like 80% fits this interpretation that's in 550. Uh, but maybe there's less twenty percent I don't know about. So like, uh, the the one you know that we've been talking about is the IPNI and the HTTP path thing. 
but if anyone knows of other things, like let me know so so that we can like loop loop those folks in and, and like get feedback from them. Like I think for the most part, everyone's just been using it as like a way to signal that this endpoint speaks HTTP. Yeah, but it yeah, but the the okay. That's 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 fine. So um, we've t talked, we've pointed people where to engage on. I guess what would be our hope or expectation, but but between now and the next uh, working implementers working group, like do we do we kind of expect to like have everyone to have made their points and like actually make some decisions by next by next time? We're trying to figure out how we get this thing unblocked. I mean, I want to give people time to think about it because it's important, uh, but I don't want it to be held up in analysis forever either. So I think folks who have a conflicting interpretation here, I think it would help to, to get their feedback here and um, specifically why they want to interpret the HTTP component as like a protocol level thing rather than a transport thing. Um, but besides that, I guess like, yeah I, I feel like i missed like the first half of this conversation mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to like properly answer like what i feel like is the blocking things here one thing that may end up being helpful as this emerges it's it's been at least uh some degree of use even if it doesn't answer all the things on like the the ipld and i guess multi-hash side of the of the of the table is mm -hmm is even if there is no formal like this is what an IPLD codec is and this is what a multi this is what a multi hash is uh having having like some documented places with we'll call it the uh the um like the the casework demonstrating like these things are good these things are bad um might help like help, might help people draw the lines right like example people thought good idea to do you know ipv4 you know one two three four tcp 80 slash p to p peer id but they didn't think that following that up with like slash ipfs bit swap 1.2 was a good idea right that was that was not a that was deemed not a good idea what does that mean for you when you try and make your proposal um again what won't, won't help won't won't like resolve won't like resolve all the all the issues but it may help people like get in the right mindset if you're finding that there's disagreement um because they'll say oh okay it's like this one which was already there or I hate that this one is already there do the rest of us hate that this one was already there and we we agree that that was an exception mm -hmm. that someone made a mistake in 2017 and we can like pretend that didn't happen and move on deleted from the case mm -hmm. history um you know like like that kind of thing for example okay. uh, i think everyone is agreed in the multi-hash space that whatever happened with the blake in the sky and hashes was like that person should be slapped and we will not be doing that again right um example of saying we made a mistake that's okay we'll move forward yeah I mean, I think what comes to mind here in the multi adder space is like the WebRTC stuff, which is just like, we don't have, and it was like the best we could do. Like, we don't have a way of saying like, here's a list of addresses. And then for this node, there, here's a, things that this node can do. And that's kind of what we want with WebRTC where it's like, here's a way of reaching this node. And by the way, this node supports WebRTC. So if you can bootstrap a connection to this node, then you can have a direct connection with WebRTC. But what we end up doing is just putting WebRTC at the end of every address. So you basically duplicate every multi adder that that node has. And it's just like there, there wasn't like another venue for this. Right. Can I jump in? Like, mm -hmm. just to sort of put, put this back, like the tone the of this conversation sort of strikes me as one of this is going in. Please tell me why this is a bad idea. And I, this is really bloating the complexity. Just reading through this document quickly, there's like a lot adding to multi adders here. Is it at all possible to do this not as a change to a spec in a way that doesn't break things? And then if it's really popular, we can move it down. Like, I just, I'm a little confused about why 
we we feel the need is there a reason just am i missing something because like this is a big change this is a lot adding a good chunk the, of stuff like i'm seeing like yeah. http one two and three all just being sort of glommed together into this generic http thing i'm like oh that, that feels a little bit you know like at, at the spec level there, there's a you know if there's some internal sort of push for this i i can understand it but from the like multi-stakeholder governance perspective it would be awesome to see instead hey we've built this incredible use case we're, we're doing this extension on multi-addresses this is how it's super effective it does this solution that we've designed generalize to everybody's problems if so we should make this a spec that is like adopted and maintained do you see the, the, the distinction that i'm trying to sort of strike here yeah so i guess there's like a couple points there uh quickly for like the multiple http versions like your browser does this just fine right like you have http whatever google.com and like you're you don't know if it's like one two or three it just like happens right like you don't you don't really have to think about that and, and that's what, what the http component would be here too um right but all yeah, the we, preceding things on the left side of the stack are talking about udp ports and <laughs> other very interesting and idiosyncratic bits about the networking stack right like we're inherently opening up a lot and like my choice of H support HTTP suites is specific I agree that the browser solves this and I liked your note about parole being the nice intuitive thing here yeah I guess like with the multi-adder the stuff to the right provide like interprets the stuff to left right so like once you know you're speaking HTTP then like the stuff to left gives you information and you don't one thing we're discussing here in this PR is like you don't actually need this like uh, TCP port if you're going to use like the default like what the browser does. But if you are going to use like a this separate port, then you do need this information. Um, and so then specifically like why are we using the HTTP component here? We could just like make a new component. Let's call it like libpdp Um That's definitely an option. It. The, this is really just like I think an aesthetic argument of like what do we want the component to look like uh so so I don't really have a strong opinion here I feel like aesthetically it's nicer if it's like an HTTP component um and then there's the question of like why now uh so one thing we want to support is an HTTP transport to be used from loop P2P. and so you'll be able to make request response protocols that support running over streams or over HTTP and make use of the HTTP middle boxes and infrastructure that exist. But like that's coming soon. And and I saw that there was like a lot of stuff already happening with this HTTP component. And before like all that stuff also gets discussed and talks about, I just wanted to like clarify uh, what like my expectations are with this HTTP component so that like we don't end up with like these multi adders in the wild that are almost this thing, but not. Like, I think the only thing that like does disagrees with like this document was the HTTP path thing. And I think that might also slightly disagree with like how you interpret multi-adders because the HTTP path is a parameter, is being used as a parameter to the HTTP component. Um, and so this doc says that HTTP component doesn't accept parameters. Uh, and in this other interpretation, you would have a parameter to this, but then it's unclear, like, what is that, like, what does the HTTP thing actually do? And I think this could be easily solved by saying, like, oh, we're talking about the IPNI protocol here. So like, this HTTP path is a parameter to the IPNI protocol, and that thing runs on top of HTTP. Like, that, that's fine. Okay, well, th well th I know we've spent quite a bit of t time on this one, so th thanks. I, so th just for, for moving forward, they, I, I'm sorry we didn't get you in here earlier, uh, Marco. I, sh I should have thought to do that. Um, this this is this is recorded, and thanks for joining here now. Uh, so we've we've agreed where people should read and leave leave comments. Um, and yeah, I, I guess is the. 
I, where is the is there another form where you would like this discussed? But you know, in terms of if we need to have some synchronous discussion time, Marco. Um, obviously, there's going to be async in this PR. Do you just want to? Should we want to reserve some time at the next IPFS uh, implementers working group to like kind of close out on this if there's still open questions, or is there another form you would like people to show up to? I, I mean, just looking at this group, it seems like most of the right people are are here. So I would just say this okay. one. Okay, so um, obviously try to do as much of this async as possible, and the hope would be that we could iron out any open things two weeks from now at the next implementers working group. Does that work for people time frame way? Sorry, time frame wise. Okie doke. Uh, thanks. Okay, I, I'll, I'll write that down and put that on next week's uh, agenda or next meeting's agenda, which is to be two weeks from now. Any, anything else, any, sorry, is there anything else anyone wants to say on this topic? Sorry, the next meeting is two weeks from now? Yeah, so it'll be June 15th. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I'll, yeah, I'll make sure you have the in invite, Marco. Oh, okay, um, well, that was the end of the agenda item. Does anybody, sorry, does anyone have anything else they wanna bring up before we close things out? Um, well, th thanks all. I guess with that, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Thanks everyone for coming. Hope you all have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll talk more soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks everybody. Thanks Steve. Yep. You're welcome. Bye-bye.